Yay, Jeff says we're live. Hi, everybody tuning in. Um, I hope there's millions of people tuning in from the internets. <laughs> um, oh, I don't have um, I am extremely uh, uh, pleased to introduce to you Dr. Christy Ford. Um, uh, you can read her bio, which is extraordinarily impressive. She's the Assistant Vice Provost for Learning and Innovation Initiatives in the Center for Innovation and Learning and Student Success. Uh, how do you pronounce that acronym? SILS. SILS. Uh, at the University of Maryland, University College, UMUC. So I'll let you go ahead and, and at some point uh, peruse all of her um, accomplishments. Uh, but I would like to warmly welcome Christy, who I just met last year. Uh, she's new to the Newton Board, uh, but we have become fast friends, and I'm so excited to have her here um, uh, talk about backwards, uh, um, the backwards classroom and using peer instruction to increase active learning. Thank you very much, Christy, for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So I'm closing it out, I think. We got one more session after this. Um, I'm going to ask you to be a little engaged with me today. So we're going to spend some time talking about peer instruction actually by doing it. My goal is, is that by the end of this session, you will know what peer instruction is, and you will also be rowdy. So my goal is to really get you guys engaged and moving. I love this quote. Eric Mazur is actually the founder of peer instruction, or coined the term peer instruction. And I love this quote that he says, the lecture is a process whereby the lecture notes of the instructor get transferred from the notebooks of the students, from the, I'm sorry, get transferred to the notebooks of the students without passing through the brains of either. And so it talks about you know, the, the, the stagnant way that we engage with our students. And so I want to offer an alternative today to have you think through how you engage with your students in your online experiences. So I really want to be able to talk about peer instruction. I'm going to really focus on low tech as well as high tech because for me it's about the methodology. I could tell you all day about how to do it in Blackboard, low cost, um, using advanced release. We can do that. But I really want to make sure that you get the term, you really understand how to make it work for you, uh, and help faculty using this terminology. So as Alex mentioned, I get to do a lot of cool stuff as it relates to learning innovations, really looking at and thinking about the classroom, what can we do from, from cognitive sciences view and, and learning sciences view to improve the way that we're doing things now, as well as being future thinking. So talking with Kevin uh, about adaptive, we're doing several pilots around adaptive learning and thinking about badging, so we're really trying to push the, the frontiers of all of that. Um, and as you can see from other things I've done, I'm a faculty um, as well, and so I teach online classes in psychology every single semester. Um, and so really, this was an opportunity for me to think about how I could engage our students uh, a lot more thoughtfully. So first thing I want you to do is I'm going to teach you peer instruction by actually doing it. Okay? So I'm going to ask that you follow me and go to this bit.ly link here, bit.ly dot I'm sorry, bit.ly slash SUNY16. It's going to take you to a document, um, a, 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 a Dropbox document. I'm asked, you can download that document, because last night in my hotel room, I couldn't figure out how to make it be upside, make it right side up. If you click Shift, Enter, and Plus three times, it'll be right in your screen where you need it to be. So bit.ly slash SUNY, if you download the document, Shift, Enter, and the plus sign, will rotate the document. I couldn't figure out how to rotate it to make it what did you say? right side up. All right. So when you get there, while you're getting there, let's just suppose that this was a piece of material that I gave you um, in an online course section. Is everybody able to get there? Okay. Okay. SUNY all caps. SUNY all caps, just as you see it listed here. What is it? Yes. Shift what? Do you mind repeating the instructions? That's okay. Ro so rotating the document. So rotating the document, shift, enter, and plus. Like, like control, alt, delete, all at the same time. It'll rotate it, rotate it, rotate it. Do that three times. You'll have it right side up. It's not working for you? No. Did you download it? Or do you, are you looking at it on the Dropbox? Okay. If you can't get it to work, look at your neighbor. We're going to spend a lot of time with our neighbors today talking. How are we doing on this side of the room? Y'all got it? You got it? Okay. Okay. For so, Mac, is Shift Control Plus. Thank you. Shift Control Plus, Mac users. 
<laughs> or just turn your laptop. It's up to you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give you a minute or two, and I want you to start where it says, um, why lecture? There's a part of the document. This actually is an excerpt from Eric's book. And I just want you to peruse that document, and then I'm going to ask you some questions around peer instruction. So I'm going to give you a minute or two to peruse the document. Shift, control, enter. How did you do that? Just pass these down. Shift, control, and plus two. Enter plus didn't look for me. Thanks. Who? On the other side, yeah. Just pass them all the way down that side. Thank you. Too bad I didn't have my handy mobile scanner. <laughs> Another minute or two. You're also getting a, a post uh, note card. Make sure you have that note card handy. Dan's passing those around. You got it? Perfect. Yes. See, that's peer instruction, Peter. <laughs> Objective one done. Peter, are you on a mat? All right, last minute. Everybody got a note card. Bro, you need a note card? You got any more? Okay. Which? Where? What? All right, y'all getting rowdy. I love it. <laughs> Anybody else need a note card? Yeah, All right. And Everybody else got so no cards? Um, right. All right, so we, get, so we got it. So here's my first question to you. Here's real low tech. You have a post-it note, I mean a note card. I'm going to show you a question in one minute. I want you to give me an answer, A, B, or C, on this note card. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to write it down. I'm going to ask you to then hold it up just like this. Got it? No note cards in the back? No. They're passing down. Pass the note cards down. Peter, I think there's some right next to you. Oh, yes. That's okay. Yeah, right, right, right. Points off. All right. All right, everybody got a note card. Here we go. No cards in hand. First question. Peer instruction requires, A, the instructor to offer content or reading assignments around the concepts, B, lecture slash resources that elaborate on the readings, C, resources that add insights around potential difficulties, or D, all of the above? Let me see your answer in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. You don't have a note card? And 1. Let me see your answer. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold up. Right now, I can't read that mic. <laughs> all right. Let me see on this side of the room. Okay, you two have different answers. Talk together, figure it out. You, you in the back have different answers. Talk together, give me a consistent answer. What's the question? Why you two have different answers. Talk. This, the four of you guys talk. Oh, you guys all got it. All right. All right. One moment. The folks that I asked to talk, 30 seconds, talk. Come right back to me. That's the question. Okay. What does peer instruction? All right, what's the answer, guys? All of the above. All of the above. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, the, so some of you who had the answer wrong, what did I ask you to do? Or had different answers? Talk to your neighbor, right? Engagement, student engagement, to talk to each other, to, to figure out. Someone has D, someone has B, why do you have D? Why do you have B? C, all right, one more, y'all ready? All right, turn the other side of your note card around. Make sure you make those letters nice and big so I can see them. All right, here we go. What is the purpose of a concept test? A, questions that trick students into a position to think more deeply about a topic. B, tests that ask all parts of the lesson. 
C, short questions on the subject or concept being discussed, or D, questions that force the students to memorize the material. Let me see your answer. All right. Okay. 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 Perfect. You guys are fast. All right, so this group right here, you all talk together. I want to have the same answer on this row. I have multiple answers here. Let me see you. See, see. Man, I'm glad I don't have, have the glass, I don't glasses. Did you guys all have the same answer? Yeah. What does that say, Alicia? I'm not you have two answers. answers. Pick one. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, this group here, talk together. Get one answer. Let me see you, you three. You guys are just two for two. What do you guys have? Okay. All right. All right, 30 seconds. Come back to me. No, no, really. How does this teach with your identity? There you go. Okay. All right, what's the answer? All right, let's talk about that. That was a little bit of a social experiment. Come back to me. Let's talk about that. So if you had to have read the assignment before I gave you the assessment, yeah, but the students need a source. You were of feeling, what were you feeling? I'm asking these questions about something you just looked at, right? You're not having a lot of time to, to ingest the information to really, like you know, answer the question. For those of you who, did you feel put on the spot? Tell me what you felt during that exercise. Annoyed. Okay, tell me why. I really, really hate multiple choice questions. Okay. Okay. What else? I had no time to think about or process any information at all. I no time to know. think about, process the information. Okay, what else? I heard it was not time to, to really concentrate on the reading. Okay, okay. Um, with multiple choice questions, some answers could be right, but you right. have to be able to discuss what right. aspects of the questions right. and the answers. Right, okay. So let me say, if this were a hybrid course, and, and I asked you to read this last night before you came in, and you didn't read it, right? <laughs> What, what experiences did you have knowing that the peers that, that ha maybe had read the material? You may feel unprepared. You may feel there's some additional um, peer pressure around being able to answer the question, to be able to engage with your peers. Mm -hmm. So the, the thought process around, and, and multiple choice is one way to go at it. Um, one of the things that I uh, really appreciate Alicia talking about yesterday is taking the Pearson material and the quiz, quiz banks and just dumping them into the course. Um, I think it just really conceptually has you think about assessments in a very, very different way and how you engage students in, in an online, a hybrid, or a face-to-face -face section. And so I wanted to have you kind of get of a sense, e very low tech. We use note cards, right? We could have done clickers. We could have done Poll Everywhere or Microsoft Pulse. I could have done all kinds of opportunities to make this engaging. I could have put in an online course. If you got the answer wrong, I would have taken you back to other material into a discussion board for students. So there are lots of opportunities to think about engagement. The, really, the goal of peer instruction is to really get students actively engaged in the course material. All right? So we're really exploiting the student engagement of the course. We're really exploiting the, the, this form. So this session has been a little different because during my presentation, what have you done? Talk to each other, right? You've grappled with something, you've shared, you've given feedback, you've really engaged throughout the presentation. Um, and also it's really trying to get at thinking about the weaknesses um, that students demonstrate in your course. One of the things that we know about that's happening in personalized learning is we're giving students an opportunity to show us in real time how they're doing in a course. We don't really have a good way of doing that now in a regular, in a regular online course. Peer instruction gives you a little glimpse into how to do that, okay? So if I'm waiting to admit for a midterm or a final to see how students are doing, I've missed the opportunity to, to offer intervention and engage the students. If I know after a concept test in, in week one where students are falling down, I know what additional material I need to include, where I need to um, focus my discussion board prompt feedback, it gives me an opportunity to engage with students at a much uh, earlier period of time. One of the things we also want to think about is, it was a little, I wanted to have the activity with you, but obviously you wouldn't ask for a student to read something and then right away ask them for a concept test. We're not looking at remembering or understanding. We're really looking at the higher level critical thinking skills here. 
So when I show you some other examples, I'm going to show you how to really think about how you, if you're going to use multiple choice, if you have to use multiple choice, even for low stakes assessments, because we also want to teach our students how to self-monitor, we want to teach them how to self-assess, um, how to write those that are a, a lot more um, in depth. So one of the things that, uh, as I just mentioned, low stakes environment allows students, as, as Kevin talked about in, in game-based theory, we really are trying to figure out how to allow students to fail forward, right? So instead of waiting until that big midterm or that big test or paper, what are the other opportunities that we're providing students to be able to show success, show failure, and then be able to recover from that before they go on to those high stake assessments? We're also talking about the, um, the ability to apply prior knowledge. So taking a concept or a topic that you know something about and then applying in a different setting. That's a different level of knowledge uh, transfer as opposed to just regurgitating the answers, which I had to do a little bit for the peer instruction piece only because I couldn't figure out any other way unless I said it to you yesterday uh, to have you do that. So really thinking about um, from the cognitive science perspective, really thinking about metacognition around self-monitoring, right? So that self-assessment, how are we allowing students to be able to see how they're doing, where they're falling down, where the gaps are, and how to move them through those gaps. Um, it gives students opportunity, again, multiple opportunities to take um, those low stakes assessments or activities before uh, moving forward. We talked also about where students um, derive their attention. Where does their attention actually, um, what, what holds their attention in learning? Uh, and, and concept test, which is the actual term that Eric Mazur calls the assessment pieces that he creates, is an opportunity to use testing and evaluation as an opportunity to gain the attention of the learner. So I'm really trying to get you to think about, you learn the concept A, but how can you apply it in setting B? All right? Um, so really trying to trick students to be able to learn and retain what they learn for long-term retention. Have you all heard of the book Make It Stick by Peter Brown? Great book, great, great book, excellent book. Um, it's the same uh, process around thinking about long-term retrieval. When we learn new information, as we looked at in the earlier presentation about new knowledge and being on a bike, how many times does it take for us to be able to learn how to ride that bike? How many opportunities for practice do we actually need to be able to move it forward? So those are things that, that, that peer instruction and concept test more specifically allows you to be able to do. So here's an example. Um, I'm actually going to skip that. Um, so concept tests off, offer an opportunity for rich assessments and students to actively engage in the learning process. So here's an example. I was working with a faculty um, who taught biology. Her old question was identify the steps of uh, photosynthesis. Right? That's low level. Remembering, understanding. I can tell you the steps. As we think about concept tests, the new question is what role does chlorophyll play in photosynthesis? You have to understand the steps. You have to understand the interaction between the steps. The knowledge that's being acquired or that's being assessed in the new level of assessment is at a higher critical thinking, a higher critical thinking level than the first, the first question that you see there. Another example. <coughs> Sorry, I didn't realize it would be so small. Uh, I'll read it to you. Uh, examine the map of the world's oceans and use it to answer the following question. Ocean service currents at B are flowing in what direction? So I'm showing you graphically a representation. I'm asking you to, to answer that question based on some core content knowledge to be able to apply it to answer the question here. That's what concept test is actually asking you to do. All right? In a hybrid model, as, a ver and as, as well as online, um, it offers opportunity to do just as I did today. If you ask me to read the assignment the night before or the, you know, before the week's class or every other week, whenever the class meets, come in class, the first thing I do when I start my hybrid class is I ask a concept test. I then have my lecture chunked into different modules. Depending on how they answer the concept test, if they all get it right, like you all did with the second one, I don't spend my time or energy drilling that concept. I don't go over that material. I don't, I don't go deeper in that material. I spend my time in other areas where I know students are actually grappling with the concepts. So the, the duality and the, the dynamic fluidity of my, my lecture actually shifts a little bit based on the types of questions and, and that I'm asking my students. All right? 
Again, in an online version, same thing. The only difference is you're just using technology. So advanced adaptive release, using the rule criterion. Once you set those metrics, if the student answers the, correct, the question incorrectly, you can tie it to a discussion board post. You can tie it to a discussion board post with additional YouTube video or some you know, small chunk lecture material. You decide what you need to provide to the student to be able to understand those concepts they're grappling with. All right? All right, so I wanted to have you really spend some time because I think, you know, when we think about flipped classrooms and backwards design, all of that, there's some dualities and, and overlap in some of those methodologies. I think for us here in peer instruction, the real standout is the piece around the concept test. Um, so I want to give you an opportunity to think about your own teaching, think about areas in which you have expertise, and I'm going to ask you to, to get together with a couple of like-minded colleagues within the room. So we may not have a one-to-one, -one. so if you are you know, a physicist, we may not have a, a group of physicists in the room, but if you're an instructional designer, if your background is education, you know, I want you to, to find a group of people, uh, come together, and then I'm going to give you the next step of instructions. So. Find someone, or if you know, I mean, most of you all know each other. Find individuals that have the same expertise or teach the same classes that you teach. So if you're in psychology or in history, or closely related enough. All right, you got your peeps. Looks like you got your peeps. All right, so here's the deal. Now that you have your group, I want you to work in your group, and I want you to create a concept test for us. You all don't have a group? Is that what you're... You have a group? I'm just giving you grief. What about you? Okay, give me grief. That's fine. I like grief. All right. Okay. Okay. So if you have a group, again, for the sake of the demonstration, I know that you may, you know, be a microeconomist and you may not have a, a like-minded peer here. Um, I want you to go to this Bitly link again, all capital letters, Bitly slash C O T E sixteen. <laughs> And I've given you some instructions around how to create your concept test. So first you need to figure out what is it that you're trying to teach the rest of us. All right, what is that concept? What is that idea? Yes? Sorry. This is what happens when you try to be dynamic. Anyone with the link can view, change that to edit. Just okay. Okay, try it more. That's A, let me see. Okay, try it. Refresh it now. Let me know. Yes? Can we open it now? Yes? Okay. Yes? No? I see hands up. Shaking. We're in a hold pattern. Is everybody else able to see it? No? I changed it. I just changed it. So you refresh the screen. Sorry. Yeah, it's still off. So go to the link. Go to advance. Because nobody else was stupid enough. That's right. Yeah. See, it's shared with specific people. Go back. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Okay. Go back. Okay. Central. I'll go back to share. Okay. And then go to share the link. Okay. And then see where it says can view. Yeah. Say. Uh, 
anyone. Just, so that's all you and you see. So that's why I push more. Okay, I'm going to put it up on the screen. How about that? Got to be flexible. Give me one second. I'll just put it up here. Kevin, is this what you're talking about? Fear of failure, not willing to try? Hold on, just one second. Oh, look at everybody who's requested. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put it up here as well. Let's see. Let's see, what would be the quickest thing? Just to put it here, you think? Yeah. All right, let me do that. Here we go. There you go. Okay, so here you go. Let me see if I can make it smaller. I don't have a basic concept of the concept. He is new. That's new. Oh, that's too small. Okay, I'll start with the top of the directions here. Can you all see this now? Make it bigger, please. Okay. So I'm going to have to read it all if I make it so big. Okay, so now you have a basic understanding. We're talking about creating a concept test. I, th I want you to think about a concept within your group that you want to share with the conference, that, like we're your students, okay? You can have additional material. You can have a diagram, something for us to review. And then I want you to think about a concept test you want to create based on that material. Does that make sense? Yes? No? Okay. <laughs> Things to consider. All right? First, I want you to think about, I want you to avoid basic questions that address lowest level of Bloom's taxonomy. Okay? Multi-step directions, list of unconnected details, and chains of logic that include more than two or three steps. Okay? So all I'm asking you to do is to, one, create a, figure out what concept you want to share with the rest of us. And two, create a concept test around it. In the meantime, I'm going to give everybody access while you're doing that. All right, so I'm going to give you three minutes to determine what your concept is, and then I'll check back in on, your, and, on you starting to create your we concept have, we have test. To out a concept to share. <laughs> For literature. Yes. point of view. That's great. Yeah. Okay. That's so, what did you want us to do? Um, we can provide. No. We can provide. No. We can provide. 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 We can Writing out the information. So that would mean that we would have to provide passage of literature that they could use by Sound good? Yep. <laughs> fundraising. Fundraising. That is how to design. Okay. Um, so are we supposed to find something? No, I didn't. I know you knew that it was there, but did you know you didn't? Literature or find a. No, I do not. First, we need. Oh, she keeps doing it. Are we going to have to read it? Because I don't know if we're going to be able to pretend. Oh. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Uh, well, I mean, it only takes a couple of sentences. Uh, talking to somebody in first person. No, it's first person. We can just use first person. Omniscient would be hard to. More than one. 
I do have so much. Um, I have, uh, well, I have a, yeah, 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 but I think you'll see you. See you. Yeah, you'll see you. See you. See you. See you. See you. Uh, on my campus, in the Atlantic campus, CAO is so happy. Name someone. A CAO. Okay, by now, everybody, at least one person in your group should be able to see the document. I've given sharing access, sharing access to at least ten people. Um, what if, okay, so we do music. What if we said learning is... Is there any group that cannot see the document? Lines of the staff. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I don't know. I'm just thinking, you know, there's five lines. What is each one of them? Three times, three, four times, and four, four times. The whole school. She was a music teacher. So I So well, no, that's 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 a learning outcome. That's a that's a measurable outcome. It is performed. Yeah. Like me. Yeah, I can find, and I didn't find the difference between three, four times. Understands hard to. Does every group have a concept? Yes, y'all got a concept? No? Oh, okay. Give me one of your names. But you can have a you can have a concept without having access to the document. Okay. Yeah. Without without okay. yeah. using their voice, they have to. All right. Everybody have access to music. Demonstrate mastery. Oh, yeah, you want to hear something? Okay. So look at the document. Uh, okay. So this is what it's going to look like. Okay. Yeah. 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 I do it one by one, so I may not have gotten you guys. Let me just find Peter's name and just. Is that the test? Question is. You do have it. Oh, perfect. You're welcome. So once you have your concept. You have your concept test and your material. There is a link on the Google Doc. I want you to post your material onto that document. I was going to Like that? I mean, you could just take the time up and recognize it. But we do what? You can take the name of the passage. I can do three, but what's going on? <laughs> I'm just thinking, I'm thinking walls in my head. All right, I see six people in the ether pad. This is good. Um, so we've got to get into her site. Should we make it multiple? Make sure you name your group. I don't know. 
person. Third person or initiative. There you go. Here's the YouTube. Two minutes. Yes. Okay. Can you put your stuff in the Yeah. And that would be in this front. Put your name of just give yourself a name. Here we go. Women. New York. Whatever. Give yourself a name next to the actual. <laughs> None of the above. <laughs> no. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start reporting out. Sounds like we have a couple folks who are ready. I'm sorry. I, I thought you guys, I'm sorry. So Peter, the URL for the Etherpad? The Etherpad is, is, is right here. Let me see if I can make it big. Etherpad.org slash P concept test underscore SUNY. Tell me your name, Lenore, right? Okay. Here we go. All right, we're going to start reporting out. We're going to start with Bill, I think, in the back. All right, you guys ready to report out? Let's hear from my colleagues. You ready? Yeah. All right. All right, we're going to start with Bill. Bill's going to tell us what his group, what their concept was, and then what their concept <coughs> test question was. When you want to use this? When I stood up, did you hear the groans? Yes, I did. <laughs> we can repeat them. Bill, use the mic. Can you use the mic, please? You've got a desk mic in front of you, to your left. Push the button. There you go. Now can you hear me? Hi, everybody. Oh, that was pretty lame. Hi, everybody. Okay, thank you. Uh, it may come as no surprise, my word is hudagogy. Hudagogy is defined as the art and science of creating learner-determined learning environments. Okay. My assignment would be, or my concept test would be, develop a hudagogical learning activity. Okay, so how are you going to assess my learning of the concept of hudagogy? That sounds like a large assessment, right? That's, that's a larger test. How would you quickly... Assess if I know who you to go G. I would read the results of your writing assignment and tell you where I thought you were strong and weak on that concept of learner determined learning environments. Okay. Let me offer a suggestion. Sure. How about you give me an example of an assignment? For instance, I teach child psych. You could give me a context based assignment that asked me to think about you know, where do I see a group of children, observe that group of children, and ask me questions about a couple of different key topics. So you're showing me the assignment. Then you're asking me, does this assignment mirror pedagogy, hudagogy, or andragogy? Because I have to know what hudagogical approaches mean to be able to apply to the example I see. I, I agree with you that you need to know what it means, but I would disagree that I should provide an example because I don't want you to model your answer after my answer. I want you to create 
an original heterogical learning activity right. without modeling it after anything that I might have suggested. Okay, so the point of the concept test is to create a low stakes assessment. Your paper would be the high stakes. That would be the t opportunity for me to be able to then judge how you have learned all the material insights about heterogogy. My short concept test is to say, do you understand the basic notion of heterogogy? If not, where can I provide additional resources or information to get you to, to that high stakes assessment? That's a little bit of the difference. I understand. I would ask, I would ask the colleagues of the student to provide all that information, though I wouldn't provide it myself. Well, if you, but, so the goal in terms of personalization is to be able to have some just in time under, understanding of how all the students are doing. So if you're asking for all the individuals to write, you're, you can't go in and look at a dashboard view quickly and assess if students have it or not. My, my, my pushback is just asking you to consider how can you quickly assess how students are doing in a snapshot, and if they're not doing well, how to give more information back to them. Understood. Thank you. All right, let me see someone from the right side of the room. All right, from number 42. <laughs> All right, John. The, the answer that they came up with to that, just to, to appease the masses, was how many roads must a man walk down? Yes. So. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> to get back on subject, um, our concept is, at, oh, well, first of all, we're a multidisciplinary team here. We've got an engineer. We've got uh, history, political science, um, a shrug. And <laughs> 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 and, and literature. Um, so we wanted to come up with it. We assumed we were teaching a class where we had all sorts of disciplines in the room at the time. So the concept we came up with was natural disasters lead to disruption. Uh, very general concept, but uh, the, um, the specific assignment would be what is the outcome of, a, uh, of the disruption in your discipline. And uh, if we were to use an example, we would use Katrina, mm -hmm. and we would explain how the disruption can be traced through all, uh, through all disciplines. It, it had a big effect on, on medicine and medical informatics. It had a big effect on music. Some great music came out of New Orleans after that happened. Um, uh, literature, there's been some excellent books written on, on the experiences of the people. Even something as, as uh, obscure as animal rights, uh, you know, the whole idea of people being forced to abandon their homes but they can't take their pets, uh, you know, so many levels this, this one uh, natural disaster affected. Okay, so question to this group, that this shruggish multidisciplinary <laughs> group, um, how are you going to be able to quickly and efficiently assess how students, if they know that concept? based on the test you provided me? Uh, I would ask them to describe, uh, sorry, I would ask them to describe, to uh, um, select a disaster and describe the disruptions that were outcomes of it. Okay, so for me, again, when I, in chatting with Bill, that's an, that seems like a high stakes long term assessment, right? So you're not going to give someone information to read about Katrina and additional information about those concepts and then immediately be able to ask them to do that. I want to figure out how you can find out, create a question that assesses where their gaps in knowledge are around the concept. So, so I, something more low stakes. Something more low stakes. We okay. have one. Okay. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. I want to get at least two more. Uh, I'll start with Lenore because I know that you've been Are burning. You bring your yeah, on? absolutely. Our concept is relational database model. This is not working. Help. And it's all there so we can be quick. Help. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks. No? System. Oh, I wish I was going to my train. My train just helped her closer. I just need to click that tab. That's all. So you can't scroll the picture. Can you close this one? It's just my. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so the system's frozen. We've, we've been disruptive. <laughs> okay, so for everyone who has it, I'll pull it up on my laptop. All right, I, I can just talk through it. Oh, you can. Everybody else can see it. Too. Yeah, everybody right. can see it. At least one person has access to it. All right, talk it through for us. All right, so it's, um, we give them a diagram and we ask them to read the intro section of chapter two, and then we have a concept test question, which of the following is true about the relational database model? A, data is stored only once. B, tables of data can be joined. This model, C, this model was introduced in the last 10 years. D, only A and B are true. E, A, B, and C are true. Um, right. And we're all computer science, um, that's scientists, that's our discipline, um, including Peter, he's a convert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I love, the, I love this opportunity because quickly and accurately you've given students a low stakes assessment. What are you asking students to be able to review with the relational model, the database model? Are you giving them material, context, a diagram? Right, what? we gave them a diagram and asked them to read the introduction to chapter two. Okay, so if a student got this wrong, what would it tell you? That they did not do a good job reading material and okay. reviewing the diagram. Okay, but would it tell you anything specific about the concept? Where the learning, where the breakdown actually happened? Well, so I think depending on their answer, we, it would tell us which elements of the model we may perfect. need to provide greater clarification on. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Excellent, excellent. All right, we got time for one more. One more, one more, all right? Yes. One more, okay, two more, come on, quick. Um, if you scroll down to the, I think it's the last one okay. on the page. Last one, it um, talks about narrative point of view. That's right, we've provided okay. a definition, very rudimentary, of narrative point of view in literature, and then we ask, we provide a passage and ask them to identify the narrative point of view in the passage. Okay, and then your question asks you in terms of third person, so it's asking for the different points of view at the bottom. So based on their answer, you know right away, immediately they understand the concept. Immediately. Perfect. Thank you. Last one, yes. <laughs> What color are you? Uh, I don't know, what are the bluey ones? Okay, bluey ones, concept three, four. Yeah. Musical time, musical yeah. time. Okay. <laughs> Learners will demonstrate their understanding of three, four musical time and four, four musical time. And one of our assessments could be uh, they, learners must demonstrate three, four musical time to their groups or to the whole class um, without using their voices at all, um, okay. and then do the same with four, four. And then um, one of the ways that learners may choose to, to demonstrate that, you know, we could imagine them doing it in many different ways, but one way might be that they would open up their laptops and find a, a song on YouTube that would be in 4-4 four, four time and another one in 3-4 time. Or maybe they would express movement or... So you could also, so that seems again, it could, that could also be high stakes. So if you provided the YouTube link and then asked them to tell you, fill in the blank, multiple choice, which one of those, and you would know automatically if they, they grasped the timing. Um, I guess I'm not sure what the question is. Musical timing. I don't know where that's coming from. Here we go. What is this in? 4-4? Four, four? It's not me. Um, so, the, so the question, which was about musical timing, was... <laughs> that was very interesting. Thank you. Pandora. Um, was about, in terms of the assessment, sharing your YouTube music video that demonstrates 3-4 and 4-4 musical time, that would be done as a high-stakes assessment. What would be the low-stake version of that? So if, if automatically you want to be able to assess students' ability to understand timing. Oh, I would actually probably just have everybody stand up and say, give them more uh, stricter parameters like show me with your body okay. um, while I clap or something like that. Okay. I don't know. And then, or, or ask them to clap along while somebody else is showing with their body to see so that I could just look around the room and see something like that. Okay, real perfect. quick. 
Perfect. So that gives me that low stakes. So do you do you all see the distinction I'm trying to make between the high stakes and low stakes? This is where personalized learning and the open learning initiative that Candace is working Stanford as well as CMU is also offering the opportunity in the low stakes uh, activities versus the high stakes. We have to give students an opportunity to fail forward, um, and I steal that from Kevin. Um, as it happens in gamification, because we always create these large, wonderful, beautiful assessments, but we don't give them enough multiple opportunities for students to self-assess, to self-monitor, and move forward. All right, thank you for your time today. I appreciate you all working with me.